How do each of the 16 personalities lead others? What is their leadership style? Who's the most likely to lead with an iron fist? Who leads with a gentle heart? And which personalities lead by bribing you with monthly pizza parties? Because I want that leader. There is a fascinating personality system called the Goldman Leadership Styles. And this categorizes leaders into six distinct types based on what motivates them and how they prefer to take charge. Today, we're gonna take a look at which leadership style each of the 16 personalities is most likely to use. One thing to keep in mind is that you can use multiple different leadership styles. In fact, the creator of the Goldman leadership styles himself, Mr. Goldman, said, the more styles a leader exhibits, the better. Because as we'll see, different styles work better in different situations. The first leadership style is the one you're probably most familiar with, commanding. The phrase that describes this style is, do what I tell you, just, just do it. The type of environment that suits this style will be one where a leader has complete control and authority over what happens with as little pushback as possible. Possible. This type of leader isn't here to build a work team's motivation or morale. And theoretically, they often have a mostly negative impact on their work environment. But that doesn't mean this style of leadership is bad. In some cases, you need to use this style. When things are running out of control or need to get back on track, that is when the commanding leader shines. For example, a project manager who needs to turn around a struggling company or someone leading a crisis response team, they both need to use this style because stuff needs to get done right now or there will be major negative consequences. This style's struggle area is gonna be situations that require a more tactful or empathetic approach to handling employees and customers. You probably don't want a commanding leader in a place like a local flower shop or like Build-A-Bear workshop. Build-A-Bear now! <laughs> Just put the button in the eye right there! Frank, you lost it talking about Build-A-Bear. So which personality types tend to embody this commanding leadership style? Well, you guessed it, it's the ESTJ and ENTJ. These types have dominant extra thinking, the function most associated with getting stuff done. These types can easily see how resources, including people, can be organized to achieve a result efficiently without worrying about, oh, Timmy got his feelings hurt because I told him uh, the, a better way to build a bear. <laughs> Frank, you're obsessed with the build a bear. Now we'll move to the opposite end of the spectrum, the leadership style that cares the most about people in their work team, the affiliative style. The motto for this leadership style is people come first, and this is going to be reflected in every action they take. Whereas the command commanding leader might see a weak link and get rid of them, the affiliative leader instead wants to build up every member so they can work together towards a common goal. And overall, they tend to have a very positive impact on their work environment. They work best in a situation that allows them to heal broken bonds between team members and foster the group's solidarity. And this type of leader is usually going to have the most patience when it comes to employees struggling, making mistakes, or having personal problems that interfere with their work. Their downside is that they can be taken advantage of easily by workers who will exploit their patience and empathy. You know, the kind of employee who's like, yeah, I, I got a family emergency. I need to take the day off. And then you see them post pictures later to social media of them out partying. Who knew going to the club was a family emergency? This means that the struggle environment for this style is gonna be one with team members who aren't interested in being a part of the team or who don't mind taking advantage of the leniency. The types that most embody this leadership style are ESFJ, ISFJ, and ENFJ. Now, all three of these types prefer extroverted feedback Feeling, the function most associated with empathy, social harmony, and building strong relationships. These types thrive as leaders by bringing people together and fostering the gifts that every member can bring to the table. Now let's change the pace by moving on to the pace setting leadership style. You see what I did there? Ha <laughs> ha! If you've ever done a group workout, you know that having an instructor or a leader who is setting the pace can motivate you to push yourself to run faster or do more reps than you might do on your own. The pace setting style's motto is do as I do right now and can easily be summarized as leading through direct action and examples. Now this type of leader does not shy away from doing the work they're asking their employees to do and will often work right alongside them in their tasks. So imagine you have a factory manager or an engineer who is showing their employees how to perform a very specific or technical task. They want to make sure their apprentices or their new employees learn how to do this task correctly and that they are motivated to complete it. The pace setter wants to see effort and results and if they see you putting in the effort they will have patience and understanding understanding if you're not getting the results right away. But 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 they gotta see they gotta see the results eventually. As such, they thrive in environments where they are leading people 
who are generally competent and care about the work they're doing. On the other hand, the pace setter is really gonna struggle with work teams that aren't actually interested in doing their job. So imagine a retail employee who shows up to work just to get a check. They aren't even interested in learning how to get better at folding clothes or selling basketballs or whatever. I mean, imagine that. So employees like that won't be interested in following the pace setter's pace, which can cause the pace setter to get frustrated with their pace. <laughs> this is not a good situation. The types that most exemplify this leadership style are the ISTJ, the ESTP, and the ISTP. Now, these three types are all practical thinkers, people who like things to be done in a matter of fact, logical way. They don't like to waste a lot of time on what ifs or think about how different the work could be. Instead, these three types know what needs to be done and they do it. They aren't afraid to dive right into the action themselves to ensure that their work gets done the way they want it. There is another leadership style that likes to be hands-on, but is a little less productivity focused. That's, that's what I'm talking about, less productivity. <laughs> the coaching leadership style has a simple motto, try this. And their goal is to help people in their work team by giving them realistic tools and methods to achieve the, 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 the desired results. <laughs> so instead of seeing the group as a whole where everyone can work together to achieve great things, the coach tends to notice the individual strengths or weaknesses of certain members and tries to coach those people to be the best that they can be. Coaching leaders can be hard on the people they work with, but at the end of the day, it's because they want the best for whoever that person is. Like they see some form of potential and they want to help them get there. Now this means they will be the first to cheer you on as you succeed, but also the first to point out your mistakes when you mess up. These types will shine in an environment where they have a personal passion for what they are doing and also where they see untapped potential in those they are leading. On the flip side, if the coach isn't interested or they don't genuinely think anyone around them is worthy of their coaching, they're gonna feel largely unmotivated and disinterested in helping. The two types that are likely to embody this type of leadership are the ESFP and ISFP. These two types prefer extroverted sensing and therefore they like to be hands-on. This also makes them adept at noticing small mistakes that someone might be making and offering suggestions on how to perform better. They also prefer introverted feeling, which leads them to typically form stronger relationships with individuals on their work teams as opposed to a larger whole. Now on to the visionary leadership style before every intuitive out there says, oh Frank, I'm the visionary, that's me. Let me explain the nuances of this style of leadership so you can really understand what it's all about. The motto of the visionary is follow my vision, come with me. Come along with me. I made that so creepy. <laughs> the primary trait they have is confidence in their own vision of a desired outcome. Unlike some of the other styles, the visionary is not often concerned with the opinions of others in the group unless they directly contribute to the vision's success. So what this means is that someone who is a visionary can be a selfish leader. It is their vision. And this type is unique in that they are a positive influence on groups most of the time, but not always. Because when a visionary is healthy, patient, and mature, they can offer unique insights into how their group could achieve something that they didn't even think was possible. So for instance, you have Steve Jobs who had a vision for Apple and revolutionized the tech industry. But if a visionary is not as mature and maybe just has a bad vision, they can lead everyone off a cliff. So think of Elizabeth Holmes who raised billions of dollars for her company Theranos, all based on lies. Yeah, she's in jail now. Let that be a word of warning to you before you defraud people out of billions of dollars. All of you are just ready to do that, I can tell. The environment these leaders shine in is one where the group has genuine belief in their vision and the leader has the freedom to take risks. This also means that this type of leader is gonna struggle when others stop them to question their goal or if other limitations such as money or higher leadership prevent them from trying new things. So what types are likely to be the visionary? It's the INTJ, INTP, and ENTP. These three types are the most most likely to have big plans that they want to bring to fruition. Whether it's a relatively practical but big goal like growing a business to seven figures in sales or shooting for the stars with space exploration, the visionary has full confidence in their ability to impact the world. The biggest strength they bring to the table as leaders is changing the status quo, being a catalyst for change. Their vision might not always be the most down to earth, but you can be certain that a visionary leader will at least make things interesting. That's all we really care about on this channel. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Last but not least, we have the democratic leadership style. The motto for this style is, what do you think? And is all about fair and productive teamwork. Unlike the affiliative leadership style, which is focused more than any other style on people, the democratic style is focused on the end goal first and foremost. The democratic leader believes that big goals can and should be achieved through collaboration, team-focused leadership, and open and honest communication. As the name suggests, the democratic leader typically listens to the group, gathering input from everyone involved before coming to a decision. When a decision is made by a democratic leader, it's a good chance that you can trust it was made in the best interest of the group and most likely by a group majority. They're not just going off on their own making weird decisions for no reason. This leader shines in environments where everyone tends to share a general purpose or set of values. So if everyone can agree on what the future should look like, the democratic leader can do their best to make that a reality. On the other hand, they're going to struggle with work teams that have wildly conflicting values or group goals. If no one can agree what we're working towards, the democratic leader is going to struggle to create a plan that makes everyone happy. The types that are most likely to be democratic leaders are the ENFP, INFP, and INFJ. These three NF types like to create a vision for the future, but they also believe that people are valuable parts of any plan worth having. NF types in general tend to be the best types at navigating complex social situations, and this gives them an edge when it comes to looking at a group's opinions on complex issues and using that information to decide how they should move forward. Let me know in the comments what leadership style you think you fit into. And until next time, stay cool and attractive. Strangers come to town.